This meme has been around for years, frankly. And it's a great idea, like, oh yeah, scientists are saying this. They're not actually, but it's this kind of thing where it's like, yeah, it's harmless. Except now it may not be quite as harmless because we have a new fossil that suggests some things about the kind of noises dinosaurs may have made. And it's in a relative of Stegosaurs, specifically in Pinacosaurus and Ankylosaur. And again, these groups are right next to one another. But it has an important part of one of its fossils that really help us understand better what sounds dinosaurs may have been making. But before that, we really need to look at the differences between how crocodilians make sounds and how birds make sounds. Crocodilians do a pretty similar thing to us, where the larynx has some folds that can close pretty tightly, and then the shaking of those from air moving through it is what actually causes the sound to be made. This is how you get the kind of grumbles that you expect from crocodilians. Birds, though, they don't use the larynx. They use a syrinx, which is kind of like a larynx in that it helps control airflow. The syrinx sits right where the lungs split and they can control each side of it independently, which is part of what allows birds to make their really, really complex sounds and calls. This means that somewhere in the fossil line between crocodilians and birds, the dinosaurs had a shift and they moved into being more syrinx-based calling rather than larynx-based calling. And there's been some ideas as to what exactly that means, because there's one chance that it could mean that they were doing both some larynx calling and some syrinx calling at the same time, or they just had an awkward middle stage where they weren't making noise at all. From this then, the syrinx developed as another additional way to make a call. And this is actually kind of interesting when we're looking at the larynx of Pinocosaurus, because it is more bird-like, and that could potentially mean that they weren't actually making noise at all in between that period. And part of this is because the larynx that's more bird-like is really great for opening up wide and getting a lot of air into the more bird-like lungs that dinosaurs would have had. This means they would have had their lungs, but also air sacs attached to them. And it's a really great way for birds because it means they can essentially empty their lungs, pump air from those air sacs into the lungs and continue breathing constantly. Because we have really good evidence that even the first dinosaurs had these kinds of lungs, it's possible that that larynx is actually that old and means that all the dinosaurs wouldn't be able to actually make these kind of complex calls that birds do and that birds evolved that kind of syrinx much later on. There's two alternatives to this idea though. The first is just that they were still calling with the larynx, it's just different kinds of calls that we hear from birds or crocodilians. The second possible option though is potentially more interesting in that maybe all of the dinosaurs did have a syrinx, meaning that they could potentially all make kind of complex bird-like calls. This idea of potentially an early evolving syrinx would then mean that, yeah, like any dinosaur may have had really, really funny calls like some birds do today. But also maybe they just didn't have that because that syrinx didn't evolve until the birds were already established. We're really gonna need more fossils in order to better understand this. And that means getting out and looking a lot because as far as syrinxes are concerned, we have one from after the birds were already established, meaning that we already expected this bird to have a syrinx and the confirmation isn't exactly the most mind blowing thing in the world. But as far as fossils of larynx are concerned, this one is one of our very few small handful of them. So finding it in a group that's very far away from birds, but still has some bird-like characteristics is a good indication that, hey, maybe more dinosaurs had this kind of larynx. And this means we really just need a kind of in between the syrinx fossil because the syrinx didn't evolve all at once. It would have been many steps and stages in its development. But if we can find one that's kind of in the middle and in, you know, if it's somewhere that's further away from the birds or closer to the birds, it's gonna have a lot of implications as to how the syrinx evolved. So hopefully we'll get out there. But again, we have one in the fossil record right now, which means we need a lot more people to get their boots on the ground or their seats into museum collections to look at these fossils.